All right, welcome back to another episode of 31 Paintings in 31 Days. I'm debating renaming the series to how many paintings can I create in 31 days instead, but we'll, we'll see. It's not over yet, you know, 10 days, we'll, uh, we'll see. And um, anyway, if you wanna check out the zebra painting, the link is gonna be above in the cards. Today, very excitingly, we are painting an animal that is near and dear to my Canadian heart. We are going to be painting polar bears. So I haven't even sketched it in yet. This is just a blank canvas, but we're gonna go and paint a polar bear on here. I am leaving the background as my rough din background because polar bears are mostly white and the animal's gonna take out most of the canvas. It's gonna have a huge head and then the body's gonna be around it. So we're gonna zoom into the polar bear's face and we'll, we'll give more tips on how to paint really white fur and get some texture in there. So off we go to it. All right, so I started blocking in the kind of darkest areas first, the eyes and the nose. Those are really the only places I have to go as a reference for this image as the rest of the picture is basically the polar bear's body. So it's not like most animals where I have an outline of the surrounding body and a couple key features. This one is basically just the eyes. And even the head is kind of not super well defined from the body. It kind of goes in, you know, a few different wrinkles. So yeah, but we are uh, working on trying to get the undertones of the fur. So all I'm paying attention to right now is whether the fur has a more warm yellow orange undertone or whether it has like a cool blue green undertone. There's a lot of blue green and yellow in polar bears and on the snow it kind of makes their fur look yellow but they depending on where the shadow is in the light they, they have different kind of colors and that's going to help us create a lot of depth in our polar bear. So the two main ways you can create depth in paintings is through warm colors pop out forward and cool colors pop out backwards and things further away just have less contrast so there's brighter whites and darker blacks closer to you and as you get further away it becomes less and less when you get into big distances everything kind of has a cooler cast on it when it's further away from atmosphere in the way or the ocean in the way depending on what your background is but um Basically with this polar bear, I, I wanted to make sure that its face was the absolute brightest thing on the canvas and that everything else around it would kind of fade out. And it's interesting because we do actually have some really harsh shadows in this photograph. They'll become a bit more apparent as we get more of the background in there. But a lot of the polar bear's fur to the left of this image is in shadow. Most of this painting, I'm using a filbert brush. I'm kind of rotating which side I'm using it for. Sometimes I'm holding it uh, flat and just using the tips of the bristles to kind of create jagged lines. Sometimes I'm holding it sideways and creating more defined first strokes. But basically all this is is so much fur and layering. So I start blocking in darker colors, then I'm slowly building up the texture I want moving a little bit lighter, trying to pay attention to the direction of the fur and the length of the fur. And essentially you can kind of see the difference now in how I'm building up the layers on the left, trying to get those green and yellow undertones. It's a lot more blue and I'm paying attention to the areas that I want to stay shadowed and I'm going to not put the brightest colors there in my layering. Compared to now, you can see the kind of more finished fur and polished fur on the right, where you can see it's kind of like the deep purple undertones going to the bright white on the far right side of the canvas. Painting so much fur like this was really fun. It did take longer than I thought. I thought this polar bear image would be pretty quick, especially because I didn't have to take time out to paint a background, but there's a lot of fur to go in here. So it, it makes sense that it was, it's, it's a, more challenging than it would be to just paint a background. So 
So now you can kind of see closer view up of me using my filbert brush. It's just a number 10 filbert. I use this paintbrush all the time. It's probably my number one go-to. And you can kind of see how I'm just working up those fur layers, trying to start further away, like lower down the animal, moving up so that the overlapping paint matches what would be overlapping in the fur. So you kind of start lower and then you slowly build up. So you kind of paint in the direction that the fur would be um, emerging from the animal's body. And it's fun because when you're doing this, it's, it's interesting to pay attention to where the brush strokes are. I'll do a full, a full fur tutorial at some point, but basically how you want to do it is you always want to have the brightest color, not go all the way into where you want the fur to come out. So it's really about if you start dark to light, you want to create a gradient on the fur so that the pieces sticking out the furthest from the animal have the most highlights. So you're not just going back and painting it the same way each time you do a fur layer. You're kind of making your fur shorter as you're doing it so that the highlight is only on the, the tips and that helps make any every individual fur strand look three-dimensional and kind of like it's you know, not, not individual strands, but the individual kind of clumps of fur, I guess I should say. There's a lot of really fun blue tones in this area. I thought it would create some really good contrast with the yellow tones of its head. Polar bears are just one of the most fascinating animals. So now we're zooming out and kind of getting a more full body view of our polar bear. And we are just gonna continue building up those fur layers. If you have any questions that you want to ask me about my painting, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I do check previous videos, so even if it's been a few months, I, uh, I really draw a lot of inspiration on what people have asked over Instagram as to what exactly to talk about. Uh, this polar bear is kind of funny because it's, it's just a lot of fur and I'm not entirely sure how to talk about it in a way that's meaningful with um, when it's a time lapse like this, but essentially I'm just trying to play around with different colors. There's kind of a really, I don't know, I think it would be a gross green color that I'm using right now just to work in building those layers because it's, it's tricky because it's not as bright in the background as it is in its head, but it's kind of funny. And this brush to, to get it more as a defined tip, I'm washing it out entirely in the sink so it doesn't get really bogged up with paint when I'm trying to do these thinner lines as well. But slowly and surely it's matching kind of like the sample patch I did on the right there. And now that I'm more or less happy with the background fur of the polar bear, we are moving on to its nose. I normally paint the nose and eyes somewhere towards the beginning middle of the, uh, of the paintings typically, but for some reason I've left it to the end this time. And we wanted to get a really nice warm, rich brown in the polar bear's eye. And I go through and I do a lot more detailed brush strokes towards the polar bear's eye because I want that to be the area of focus. So I'm kind of going through and adding very detailed brush strokes of like individual strands of fur, more, more so than the rest of the polar bear's body, which has larger kind of clumps of fur. I really wanted to make sure the two eyes stood out. And the glint is just my favorite part of all my paintings. It just really brings life in a 10 second painting trick. So it's, it's really quick to, to put the glint on the eye and it makes such a world of difference in the expression of the animal, where you place it. And I just, I think it's one of my favorite parts. The fur on its head and nose was very interesting because it's very short. So it was hard to try and figure out a way to paint it quickly so I didn't have to paint every individual stroke, kind of like what I had done with the tiger painting, but so that it still looked seamless enough that it fit with the face. 
So yeah, we're just trying to play around with the different blue shades, different green shades, and I'm putting on the color and then kind of using different colors, different angles of the brush, and then doing a bit of a wash of white over top of it so that it kind of blends in well with the rest of the face. Especially around its nose, I really wanted to make it apparent, the shorter texture of the brush strokes. So I did a lot of work to try and get the texture right on its nose. And of course we want to smooth it out and make it so it blends in with the face and looks 3D as well. And you couldn't actually see the whiskers of the polar bear, but you could still see the lines kind of coming up from between its nose and its mouth where it would have whiskers. So I made sure to include that detail. This whole painting, I pretty much just used the Filbert number 10 brush. I think I switched to a smaller brush for a little while during around the eyes of the polar bear, but it wasn't even that, that small of a brush. Yeah, I think I would challenge everybody to try and paint an entire painting with one paintbrush. I think it's a great exercise in how to use a paintbrush in different ways. Filberts are great because they have a fine edge on them and they are a bigger brush so you can cover a lot more area and move through a painting much quicker. You always want to start with bigger brushes and then move to smaller brushes, especially when you're having to cover a lot of space. If I was going to refine the polar bear further, I would then go in with a smaller brush at this stage and really work on the individual details of different first strokes. But because we're in a challenge and we got to get things going, it's a numbers game. So we are going to leave this here. We're just polishing off a few last little details of the polar bear's face. There we have our polar bear. I hope you enjoyed this video and a bit more information on which brushes I use while I'm painting fur. And I hope that you guys will continue watching my videos. Hit the subscribe button below if you want to get notifications for them. And if you want to see the rest of the paintings in this series, you can check out the playlist that'll be linked below. Thank you so much for watching again and we'll see you guys next time.